Today I'm going to talk to you about how everything's going with my curriculum choices for the 2023-2024 school year. We're only in September and so I've adjusted a few things but for the most part things are working out pretty well. So I have separate videos on each of my curriculum choices and how I do my folder systems but now you're going to see all the folders together and I'm going to kind of run through some of the adjustments I've made and how it I works. I said in one of the videos that I'm actually homeschooling four kids and now I'm homeschooling a fifth child. So my own children, of course, I have every day, but the other two, I only have two days a week. And so that's pretty exciting. And I'm actually doing tutoring through a scholarship program that I'm gonna to have to share another video on in case you're interested in how to get free money for your homeschool. But let's get back to focusing on the baskets. So I do have a basket for each child, but we're gonna just focus on my son's basket. And again, he's in second grade. And so we do start our morning off with Bible. So I do have a Bible time folder. The main component is really just of reviewing our memory verses and our little like card box. And then we highlight any verses we've learned in our memory verse box uh, at the end of the week or month, whenever they learn the verse or review a verse. We're really focusing on review this year. Like if they're willing to say some of the review verses instead of me saying it to them and they still remember that verse, I'll add a tally, like a group effort. When we get to 10 tallies as you know, a group, my daughter and my son, then they get like a little skill or a piece of candy or something. And they do have like yum earth Skittles that are made with like plant-based uh, dyes. And so, you know, we're chocolate bars and things like that. And then the Bible folder comes into play a little bit. I'm gonna try catechism songs and or the questions from the shorter catechism. And I have some different charts, which we haven't done too much. I mostly will play songs for these. All right, and then after Bible, we have him study, but I'll either play it along with, like I have a playlist for like key songs, like our hymn, any learning time songs, a catechism song, and I try to put them all in one playlist that we're actively using. And then I also have individual playlists for like Bible literacy, catechism songs and stuff, but then I'll pull from each of those playlists into the you know, current playlist that we're actively working on. And so we might play it from that playlist or just sit down and sing it from our hymn folder. All right, and then it's morning basket time. I do find that morning basket time, I've had to be really flexible with that. Having um, two days a week where I have a kindergartner with us, he's just not as interested in the books that my son who's in second grade is interested in. So sometimes I'll go ahead and read the books I wanted or needed to read for my son while he's doing something else or listening passively. But other times I'll sort of change it up and read something that might be more engaging. Like this week during morning basket time, we read Goldilocks and the Three Bears and my son enjoyed it too. And we practiced narration with that. So in my folder, whether we are doing our loop that I had planned or not, you know, I can uh, fill out our reading log of what book we read that day. Like if you wanna keep track of when you do narrations, you, I have a check the box kind of narration. Um, log. And right now we are reading this for our unit. We did Native Americans in August and we're you know walking through history. So next is Explorers and this is on Amerigo Vespucci and also touches on Christopher Columbus. So that's part of our morning basket. And we're working through the sign of the beaver this month. Um, we were supposed to finish this in August, but we're a little behind and that's okay. And I've been enjoying as part of our English language arts checklist that I'll show you. And one of the things on that checklist is to use a dictionary at our leisure. So if we come across a word in this book that we're curious about, that he's curious about, uh, that's my chance to pull out the dictionary at the end of the chapter. And remember that word we were curious about and you know, I'll model for him how to find it. Or today I went ahead and had him find the word disgraced and we looked it up and I checked off that we used the dictionary and there you have it. We're getting in some ELA skills, but in a flexible way, not worrying about a curriculum telling me when and how to do it, making it real life when we need it and want it. All right, and then after morning basket, we move into calendar and math. And we might do some memory work. So my son's learning the 50 states. I have a whole memory work binder, but to keep it simple, I took out what we're focusing on at that time out of the memory work binder and put it in the calendar. And I think uh, eventually I'm gonna have him color all the states he can identify on this fun coloring map. And then we just do a very simple routine. He's already, he already knows his, you know, months and, you know, the days of the week and the seasons and how many days are in each month using this fun poem. So we don't always do that part. Um, 
my preschooler daughter, we may do that into the kindergartner when he's here. But the main thing for him is just checking off today's date. And this is a really fun little routine that everybody knows, but I added something to it. So do today is Thursday, September 14th. Yesterday was Wednesday, September 13th. And yep, tomorrow will be Friday routine. And here's the fun part I thought you, that you might like. So you could say, yesterday was the past. Tomorrow is the future, today is the present, the present is a gift. And I don't know where I heard that, but it's just kind of cool to focus on today is a gift. The present is called a present, it's the present and it reminds us of a present because it's a gift from God to be alive, to be breathing. And just right there we can pause and just remember, just enjoy your journey with your kids. It's so tempting to let frustrations and things come into play, I do too. But just to step back and remember to just enjoy the journey and be patient and loving and have fun. <laughs> Not always easy. Okay, and then after calendar, we move into math. I'm excited because he's really just doing well and becoming more and more independent. We're in the level two. I, I copy the table of contents and use it like a bookmark, and then I can put this in the um, portfolio at the end of the year, along with just the unit assessments. And then the rest of the book, I can chuck or put somewhere and eventually chuck it, but just keep unit assessments in the portfolio and the table of contents. And I check off each day and put the date by the lesson we did in the table of contents. So a little fun idea for you to stay organized. And it just feels good to look back like, okay, where are we at? Where are we going? Okay, then after that, he may do writing, reading, or spelling. So let's just say next he's in the mood to read, and I'm really excited about this. Okay, so I showed you a basket of books. Some of them might be related to history, like, you know, step into reading type stuff and like mini chaptery kind of, you know, history books for you know, like elementary school students. Some of them were related to science. I even had like the Christian Liberty Press science book that's a nature reader. That if you haven't heard of those, they're pretty neat. And I also had some fun fiction like Billy and Blaze series. And I was gonna encourage him to read Billy and Blaze, which he um, has been reading. Um, but then I was gonna have him like really wanna break into chapter books this year. I'm so excited because I actually watched a video by um, The Good and the Beautiful, like the, the lady, the creator, uh, Jenny Phillips, I believe. And I was really surprised because the video caught my attention because it said why I do or something like that, pay my kids to read. And I was like, oh, whoa, whoa, this is cool. Cause like, if she pays her kids to read, that, I gotta watch this because most people are like, oh, don't pay your kids to read because you want them to have intrinsic motivation, meaning like to wanna do it and love to read, not because of extrinsic or external motivation, you know, like bribery or whatever. And I don't like to bribe. We wanna stay away from that kind of stuff, but I don't think bribery and motivation or rewards are the same thing. So I decided, I don't know if I can change my thinking and actually like call it money, but I was like, I wanna try this because I really feel like He's the type of kid I can trust that if he says he read something, he did read it. And he likes to read, he just doesn't always want to read chapter books because it looks overwhelming. So I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try this. She said that she pays her kids to read. And like, depending on the book will be the amount. But I was like, I think I'll do something a little different. Like I've, I've done like little motivational things like stickers and stars, but I was like, I know. He really wants to get this Lego kit that's like really expensive and he loves putting Lego kits together. So I'm gonna call it Lego points. And I'm gonna, I made this chapter book, which he's, broken in and he's actually like not resisting now to read a chapter book i'm super excited and at first it didn't seem like it was going to work because at first it's like even though like for like a week or two i was like setting him up to do it and we're gonna earn lego points it's like he still was still wanting to read other things and i was like i didn't give up and i was like okay and then eventually just kind of re-asking him again like once he broke into the book and realized hey like this isn't that overwhelming like reading a chapter or two a day and he started really enjoying it. He'll come show me the funny parts. And we've already read this series together when he was in preschool. So it's familiar and he already really, really loved this series. But anyway, so I call it Lego points. And so I have a little index card and every time, like when he finishes this book, he'll get seven Lego points. And I'm being kind of generous in the beginning just because I want to get him excited. So when he gets to get enough, I can go buy him a Lego kit, something I would have probably wanted to buy him anyway because it's sort of educational. And of course, what I'm doing is every time he reads a whole like picture book or a chapter he gets like a tally per chapter or per book and then I can write a note of like kind of key types of books or chapter books he wrote like a little star next to like this book if it's a chapter book that he read this month and so I have a box for each month it's like 
a little easier than having him write every single thing. Then we have our spelling. Okay, so spelling. I told you that I was using spelling power, but I'm like making my own routine. So I have a sheet that I typed up and it has like the routine I'm doing. And it's working really well. So what I did though is spelling power has you do a placement test starting at age eight. My son is seven, but I felt like he was ready to start their spelling program. You know, a lot of spelling programs start in first grade and the words are actually harder. But when I looked at their first spelling list, it's actually pretty easy. And so I didn't give him the placement test. I'm just like, I'm just gonna start with the first one since it says age eight, I wanna keep it easy on him. And I wasn't sure if, if it was gonna be as easy as I thought it was, but it ended up like he's getting 100% on every test except one he got 80% so far. And what I do, if let's say he got 80% one week, then what I do is have him practice the words he missed. Like maybe I could make up an activity in the notebook. It could be three times each, or it could be rainbow words, or it could be just spelling it orally, whatever you know we think of. Let's say he gets 100% of the test. Well then what I do instead is I do the homophone game, which is kind of like spelling. So like we would play this game where I have a you know, a game board, I'll show you. And there's six boxes, and so there's, and we take a dice, and you know, there's six numbers on the dice. And in each box, there's a pair of homonym, or homophones. And so, and then I have all those written out on cards. And so if I roll and I would pick one of the homophone pairs, I like, like male and male, M-A-I-L and M-A-L-E. And I could say a sentence, and then he would have to hold up the correct card. So if I said, let's go check the mail, he'd hold up M I. M-A-I-L instead of male, like the man, M-A-L-E. And so that's how you play. And so if it's my turn, I'd roll and say a sentence for him and he'd hold up the card. If it's his turn, he rolls and says a sentence for me and I hold up the correct card. You could also make it more challenging instead of having the cards to help him spell, you could have him just spell it from his memory or have them, you know, I might have him write it instead um, because I make one board game for an entire season. So I have a fall board game, a winter and a spring. So you know, by pretty quickly they might know, I mean, you could just make it more challenging that way. Like now, it's fun. Like you've got 100% on the spelling test, great. You can work on the homophones. Or I can take my Abeka handbook for reading and I can pick a, a spelling pattern from there that I think he could work on. Or maybe I noticed some words in his writing that I think would be a good pattern or type of word to add. And I can write a note in here, like work on those words. I can just jot them down to remind myself for those weeks when he gets 100% spelling test or even an 80 percent maybe he'll learn the couple words he missed pretty quickly and we'll still have some more time and then it also gives me the freedom to go oh you know what today we're just skipping spelling altogether and i'm okay with that because you're you've got 100 percent of the pretest so we won't be doing homonyms or that today or whatever you know so that's spelling and i'm loving it and then our writing folder so i made some adjustments i still have all the same components each month there's a menu with topics that he can like you know write on and so that we've used some of the topics, but then alternately, I have had him write from topics that he just wants to write about, but he's not usually the type that comes up with topics on his own. Like he kind of would rather have something to jar his ideas. That's where it's nice to have this as an option, but not be glued to it. And so if we did pick a topic, we could use this, but I find we're not really needing to, like he doesn't need this to help him brainstorm the main topic in details, but if I might, I've used it a couple times so far, where, especially for spelling. But um, what I find that we're doing right now is we're taking the Christian Liberty Nature Reader, and he's finishing up his one from last year, and then we're gonna start doing the same thing with the second Nature Reader. And like what I'll have him do is read one section from it. There's like little small sections. So here's an example. He did the Kingbird the last two days. So he read this page and this page. So he'll read that and then he'll kind of use those words to help him make up his own sentences. So it can help him with spelling and it can also teach him how to like use a source. And so he needs to give me a topic sentence, three detail sentence and a closing, you know, and it might take him one or two days to do that, whereas in kindergarten first, I did more like a sentence a day. And so it's really cool because I'll like read what he read and he's not just copying the book. Like he might use some of their words, but he's actually drawing his own conclusions based on what he read and making his own sentences about the topic, which is really a great skill and I'm, I'm excited and it's working well. So we might continue to use the nature reader, but then we might switch it up. Maybe I don't wanna always do um, nonfiction. So I could do the same concept. The idea is that you have something short and sweet. And so I could do the same thing with fables or the short Bible stories from the beginner's Bible. If, 
like, you know, the lion and the mouse from Aesop's Fables. It's like just a few pages. And so he could read that quickly and then retell the story. So it's like a written narration. Now, um, I know that in the Charlotte Mason methodology, they don't recommend written narrations till older than my son's age. But because I do a writing workshop approach and use copy work and dictation and guided writing more as a um, way to aid him, and I'm, you know, I'm not worried about that. I feel like writing from the beginning is good because it's working for us and I didn't feel like I needed to just have him do copy work continually and not add in actual writing. So I might actually use the worksheets eventually, we'll see. But right now I feel like the writing is enough and he's getting a lot out of that. He's getting punctuation and spelling and grammar and conventions and all the things. Uh, but it is nice to hone in and specific things um, too. So that's why I do have the checklist and I'll do like little mini lessons with him. All right, and I almost forgot to show you my history and science folder. Now I showed the science folder in my science video, but I actually adjusted it within like, a, you know, a few weeks of that over time. I, you know, edited it and changed it and made it even better with links to everything. And um, history in my video, I didn't have the plans typed up. I didn't show them at all. Like I had my own little scratch typed up draft, but I was inspired uh, by some friends who wanted to use it from my homeschool group to really amp it up and just make it, um, you know, usable by others. So I'm gonna quickly show you. So I actually made a cover page and everything. So it's Create and Wonder History Year Two. I'm simply calling it Year Two because um, for my son, it is Year Two or Second Grade, but it really could be through K through Fifth Grade, family style. And um, it's basically using picture books, as I shared in my video, to walk through American history from Native Americans all the way to the abolitionists and freedom riders, you know, so you're going from early, early, you know, pre-Columbian all the way to, um, yeah, Martin Luther King Jr. basically, you know. And so I actually changed a lot of the books that I shared in my video. So I have a month by month overview of the keywords and the topics that I shared. So it's natives, explorers, settlers, pilgrims, colonials, patriots, founders, framers, or presidents, pioneers, inventors, abolitionists, and free to freedom writers. And basically I have a book list with the links and they're clickable. So it'll like take you straight to that book on Amazon. And then I have, you know, each unit on one page. I'm a big fan of putting it all on one page, monthly units. I'm a month by month unit type of person. I just think it makes things much easier. And that doesn't mean that, for example, like I said, my one book that I was supposed to finish in August, I'm still going into September with that. You know, that's okay. But, the, you know, having kind of monthly big picture goals of what we're focusing on topically helps me to stay organized. And then I try to kind of break that down into week by week sections. In this, however, I didn't always break it down to week by week, which gives flexibility. It's kind of focusing on what are the key books? What are some key activities? I'll share things like virtual tours, books, um, you know, visuals that you can click on and pull up um, on your phone quickly, which is why it's good to have a hard copy and a digital copy uploaded so you can have your phone and like pull it up the links real quick. I don't even cast it from your phone to your big screen if it's something you want your kids to see. Like we uh, had a, a Statue of Liberty virtual tour. So I casted it from my phone to the TV and it was really cool and fun for them to like go inside the Statue of Liberty and it lets you click and go at your pace on like a video, which videos are great options too. And anyway, so it, and then at the end of each unit, it has a know or discuss. Okay, so it's, it gives you key things your child should know by the end of that unit. And also each unit reminds you to do a set the stage routine, which is very Charlotte Mason, um, because what it's telling you to do is use these story retelling cards. I made cards for each period to match up to the month by month units. So you have like about one card, sometimes two cards for each month. And it's like a picture clue to remind them, okay, retell the story of the natives. Now talk about the explorers. Now talk about, you know, the settlers and the pilgrims and the colonials. And then they can put the cards in order and retell America's story in their own words. So each month you're resetting the stage using the card from before to tell what you already learned the story. And you can kind of model that for them until they're comfortable to do it. And then you would preview with the next card what's going to be, what we're going to be learning about in this unit and just always practicing reviewing and previewing.
reviewing and learning and narrating. But yeah, so that's the same format for each month and it's just simple black and white. You know, it's not, you know, gonna be ink heavy with colors. Like, um, you know, this would be an example of a link that I would give you. If you click on that, it would pull up this image of the key founding fathers that your child might wanna see pictures of. And then you could print it out or just let them look at it right on your phone or computer. And so I'll have other visuals as you go and activities. You know, when we learn about Christopher Columbus, I have a link to the Christopher Columbus poem for, you know, 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. And it's actually quite, quite long. It's something they can be familiar with and or memorize. And so I'm excited about the book choices. I really feel like the changes that I made from the video, like I wish I could make another video showing you because there's just some really great books that we're enjoying. And that's where, you know, you can also adjust and uh, adapt by using books that you already have on those topics and or using the ones I suggest. And so again, science is the same thing. Basically, I month by month units and it actually kind of goes along with the history thematically. So not perfectly, but like for example, in September, we're learning about explorers and history. So I, we're learning to explore nature and science. We're being explorers and we're reading Ellie's log and we're, you know, making nature notebooks and nature treasure boxes and they're, activities related to identifying and learning about and enjoying nature. I also in science give like a whole section on like um, nature study and give like little nature devotionals like examples of stories and things and connections I've made with my children while out in nature um, like to science as well as spiritually and I also give seasonal nature study projects in the fall with tadpoles and you know in the spring butterflies and I, you'll have to look to see the other ones so anyway my month by month unit so landforms and landmarks for august exploring nature and, uh, and you don't have to do it in the month i do it so i put unit one so in case you're doing it a completely different month that's fine classifying animals and biomes and not you know learning about that type of thing and it's seasons talking about seasons and then matters matter properties and states and changes then in winter i make it real light we're going to talk about like snowflakes and do a little fun snowflake bentley thing and make a cool borax crystal ornament birds is the next unit and anatomy very simple anatomy unit that's fun and um, learning the different body systems the basic ones for kids and some other things and key organs force and motion or newton's which is new, you know related to newton's laws benjamin franklin and talking about being an inventor which is a really fun tie to history because by this point in history we're learning about inventors at, you know the industrial revolution so then in science they're learning about benjamin franklin and talking about being an inventor maybe uh, doing some little stem projects and making little inventions and things and then the last month is astronomy and i thought that's fun because it actually matches up too when we think about our history unit with um you know, we're gonna start off talking about follow the drinking board when the slaves were using the constellation and finding routes to the northern states to freedom. And so that kind of relates. And then we're talking about astronomy. All right, and then I give like your supply list for the nature, your seasonal stuff, and then your units, same format, you know. I kind of broke it down into weeks more for the science, like week by week also, but at the end I have a no section and you can check this. And for everything, there's check boxes for the science and the history. So it's like, yes, we read this book. Yes, we did this. And if you don't check it off, that's fine. But at least you kind of know what you did and what you didn't do. And then you can check off what they knew by the end. And if they didn't know it, then you can like kind of be like, oh, I, maybe I can review this a little more. And so, yeah. And that's the format and I even give like key geography skills in order that you can be working on in the September or the second unit and I actually have charts for each of these for my kids um, I didn't put links but that's something I might add so you can print out like if I say oh no you know the seven continents and five oceans and you can print those in color and start a memory work review binder um, but I did not put links to those but you could easily uh, print your own googling it making a screenshot dragging it into word or just opening up the screenshot and printing it. And if you want to see more, I the video does go into more depth. So I hope that was helpful and I hope you're having a great school year. Let me know if you have any questions or thoughts and I'll see you next time. Don't forget to enjoy the journey.